hidden in the fabric of our universe. A mathematical tool that unveils the intricate dance of variables and constants. Present in the balance of ecosystems, the path of satellites, the planning of war strategies, the optimization of industrial production. Partial differentiation, the next level from one variable functions as we turn to explore a world of multiple variables. But what does it mean? How does it impact your life, decisions and understanding of the world? Join me in this video as we explore partial differentiation mathematically to fully understand the process and intuitively to get solutions in seconds with Wolfram Mathematica. In real life, many situations depend on multiple factors, whether it's a combination of longitude and latitude to predict a region's temperature, or capital and labor to model the production of a certain good. We use multivariable functions to describe these complex situations through each relevant component variable that give rise to certain outcomes. Partial differentiation allows us to isolate and identify the pure effects on the function from potential changes in any one of its variables by keeping the others constant. Imagine you are baking pizzas at your restaurant depending on two variables, the number of workers and the number of ovens. You will need to understand how changing the number of either workers or ovens while keeping the other constant affects your baking capacity of pizzas. This is where partial differentiation comes into play. When taking a partial derivative of a function with respect to one of its variables, we treat the other variables as constants. It helps us understand how our function changes with respect to that specific variable, leaving everything else untouched. Going back to one variable functions, if we had to differentiate the function g of x is equal to 8 times x, g prime of x would be easy to find as a constant 8. However, if we were to convert it to a multivariate function by changing that g of x into g of x and y, for example, 4 times x times y, in this case, this new g of x and y would simply be equal to our original g of x for all cases in which y is equal to 2. Because if we plug y is equal to 2 into our new g of x and y, we get 8 times x, which is our original g of x. Therefore, with our new g of x and y, we can take partial derivatives in terms of either x or y and denote them in this way respectively. If we were to take the partial derivative of g of x and y with respect to x, we would get 4 times y which is the same result for the original g prime of x we found when y is equal to 2, since we would get 4 times 2 equal to 8. It's just that, in the case of this new partial derivative, that value of y can take any value and is not restricted to the value of 2. Similarly, if it were with respect to y, we would get 4 times x, again for any non-restricted value of x. These are first-order partial derivatives. The first one shows how our original function changes as we alter x while keeping y fixed. The second one shows how it changes as we alter y while keeping x fixed. Furthermore, you can find second-order partial derivatives in the three following ways with respect to x two times in a row, with respect to y two times in a row, or firstly with respect to x and then with respect to y, which is the same as firstly taking it with respect to y and then with respect to x for all continuous functions. This third way is what we call a cross partial derivative. Going back to our pizza enterprise, we now denote the number of workers as x and the number of ovens as y. 
which are part of this function of x and y for our hourly baking output of pizzas. Can you figure out by yourself what are all the partial derivatives? By taking x and y terms constant where appropriate, we find these two first order partial derivatives, from which we can then find the three second order partial derivatives, including the cross partial derivative in this way. But we can use Wolfram Mathematica to get these solutions instantly and check out if our work is correct. To find the first order partial derivatives, firstly with respect to x, we use d open and close square brackets. Within the square brackets, type your function f of x and y, comma x, and hit shift plus enter to run the code. Similarly, to differentiate with respect to y, we do exactly the same, but instead of the comma x, we do comma y. Then, to find the second order partial derivatives, we use the codes we wrote above and repeat the process. With respect to x, two times in a row, we type again d, open and close the square brackets, within the same square brackets, write the code for the first order partial derivative with respect to x, add a comma, and x, and hit shift plus enter to run the code. Similarly, with respect to y two times in a row, we do exactly the same, but again, instead of a comma x, we do comma y. Lastly, for the cross partial derivative, we do d, open and close the square brackets, within the square brackets, write the code for the first order partial derivative with respect to x, add a comma, and then y, because we do first x, and then y, or vice versa, which would give us the same result, and then hit shift plus enter to run the code. Wolfram Mathematica gives us solutions in seconds through the power of computation for any differentiable functions we may want to study. But I coded this interactive code, a quite extensive one in retrospect, but that does not matter for now, in order to see how all the partial derivatives change as we change the function's coefficients by using these sliders. Also, with second-order partial derivatives, we can construct a matrix that will give us important information for when we start optimizing multivariate functions, which we will do in a later video, so make sure to stay tuned. This matrix, called a Hayesian matrix, is comprised diagonally downwards of the second-order partial derivatives with respect to each variable two times and diagonally upwards of the cross partial derivatives. Again, we can see how the Hayesian matrix changes as we change these sliders in this code that I made. Partial differentiation has powerful applications in economics, physics, biology, and many other fields. It helps us break down complex relationships into more understandable parts. It may sound complex at times, but with a bit of practice and the power of Wolfram Mathematica, it becomes an essential tool in your mathematical skill set. So keep exploring, keep learning, and remember, stay curious, stay passionate. This is Carlos, signing off for Angulo Life. Have a beautiful day. Peace.